You know how it goes. One day we are born, and one day we die. One day, some are taught how to follow the rules, and the other day, some break those rules. Everything that happens in the present, we understand and act on the situations, and the future follows accordingly. Everything that happens in the past, we learn from them and never try to do the same. Everything that happens in the future, we know nothing about them. As a result, there arises a lot of questions. Why in this universe, where billions of other stars and planets are present, we are only aware of our existence? What is our purpose? Are there more to what we are already doing? Is everything we are doing just futile? As a result, it gets very difficult to understand the purposes of life. Life, in itself, has no meaning. It's only humans who have cloaked a meaning to its existence. Life comes, life goes. Life has no purpose. Life has no meaning. This is nihilism, a belief of nothingness, a belief that morals don't exist. Equality doesn't exist. Humans are nothing compared to this universe. It rejects the general concepts of objective truth, knowledge, morality, values, or meaning. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a nameless monster. The monster was dying to have a name. So the monster made up his mind and set out on a journey to look for one. But the world was such a very large place, the monster split in two and went on separate journeys. One went east, the other headed west. The one who went east came upon a village. There was a blacksmith who lived at the village's entrance. Mr. Blacksmith, please give me your name, said the monster. I can't give you my name, replied the blacksmith. If you give me your name, I'll go inside you and make you strong, said the monster. Really, said the blacksmith. If you make me stronger, I'll give you my name. The monster went into the blacksmith. And so, the monster became Otto the blacksmith. Otto was the strongest man in town. But then one day he said, Look at me, look at me. The monster inside of me is getting bigger. Munch, munch, chomp, chomp, gobble, gobble. Gulp. The hungry monster ate up Otto from the inside out. Once again, he was a monster without a name. Next, he went into Hans the shoemaker. However, munch munch, chomp chomp, gobble gobble, gulp. Once again, he went back to being a monster without a name. Then he became Thomas the Hunter, but soon, munch munch, chomp chomp, gobble gobble, gulp. Back he went to being a monster without a name. The monster next went to a castle to look for a nice name. He came upon a very sick boy who lived in that castle. If you give me your name, I'll make you strong, said the monster. The boy replied, if you can make me healthy and strong, I will give you my name. So the monster jumped right into the boy. And the boy became full of vigor. The king was overjoyed. He announced, the prince is healthy, the prince is strong, 
The monster became quite fond of the boy's name. He was also quite pleased with his royal life in the castle. So he controlled himself no matter how ravenous his appetite became. Day after day, despite his growing hunger, the monster stayed put inside the boy. But finally, the hunger just became too great. Look at me! Look at me, said the boy. The monster inside of me has gotten this big. The boy devoured the king and all his servants. Munch, munch. Chomp, chomp. Gobble, gobble. Gulp. The castle was lonely now with everyone gone, so the boy left on a journey. He walked and walked for days. And then one day, the boy came upon the monster who had gone west. I have a name, said the boy, and it's such a wonderful one at that. But the monster who went west replied, who needs a name? I'm perfectly happy without one. After all, that's what we are. Nameless monsters. The boy ate up the monster who went west. At last he had found a name, but there was no longer anyone to call him by it. Such a shame, because Johan was such a wonderful name. The folklore that had been shown just now is from the anime called Monster. Monster is based on this entire drama when a doctor makes the highly controversial decision to save a boy's life over the mayor's. It leads to the loss of almost everything he holds there. His fiance, his career, his social standing. The only thing he keeps is his own feeling of sulfur. Knowing that he did the right thing in saving the boy who came first. Yet even that is threatened when he learns that nothing is as it is originally appeared. A trail of bloodshed pointing to the seemingly innocent child leaves him questioning even his beliefs, whether in the end, all lives are ever truly equal. This boy was called Johann Lieber. In order to learn how Johann came to be the monster he is now, we need to take an inspection at his backstory. Spoiler alert, as I'll be using a few of the plot to describe Johan. There are many hints throughout the manga that Johan had a terrible upbringing. Johan was said to grow up in Kinderheim 511, an orphanage infamous for violating human rights and running some experiments. As we learn more about Johan throughout the series, it becomes clear on how he became a monster. Kinderheim 511 ran horrible experiments on children to create super soldiers. These experiments resulted in creating the children that they are, the monsters. Human beings can become anything. Kinderheim 511 resulted in children forgetting their names and becoming nameless monsters, just like Franz Bonapartes, the nameless monster. Kinderheim 511 stripped away emotions from children that make people human. The children on Kinderheim 511 were never loved. Johan was never loved. Johan was dying to have a name. There was no one around to call him by that. He wanted to have a name. He wanted to be loved and be called by the name affectionately. But he never experienced that love. The only thing that was left in the world for him was his twin sister, or his other part, just like the monster from Bonaparte's story. And when Anna came back from the Red Rose Mansion, Johan embraced her memories into his own, and became her. I am you. You are me. Just like the monster in Bonaparte's story, with Johan eating Anna like the monster in the Nameless Monster, Johan learned about how his mother abandoned Anna,
His mother showed him no love. She abandoned Anna in a second and indefinitely could have been Johan. The reason he was born was because of an experiment and a mission conducted by the government. Having experienced no love, Johan was broken. When he killed the Libert, Johan played a game, the rooftop game. But instead of a rooftop, he was playing with fate. He wanted to see if Anna, the only one he cares for in this world, his other self, can forgive him or not. Whether he himself is capable of showing love. But when Anna shot him, he was completely broken. He was not shown a single drop of love, even for himself. And thus, the nihilist monster was born. Johan doesn't care about anything. He was born, not because of love, but because of a mission. Johan was abandoned as his child experienced the horror of not having a name and spent a year in Kinderheim 511. It was like life made him suffer every bad thing and not a single good thing. When he was talking with a kid, he was in fact talking to himself. <laughs> Did anyone ever want you? What is the reason for living? If nobody calls you out, no one wants you. And when that boy was coolly convinced by Johan's words that no one cared about him and he had no reason to live, every day in this harsh world is a dark day. But then Grimer showed up. Grimer told him that tomorrow will be a good day. Grimer showed him affection and love. That boy then returned from nihilism because he was shown love. Unlike Johan, who was never shown affection for, and that was the reason he didn't become like Johan. The same thing with Dita. Dita said that every day will be a dark day and the world is cruel. But Tenma showed him affection. Tenma healed his legs and showing true love. Dita came down from the chair Johan once sat on. Dita was shown that love exists. Dita was shown and convinced that tomorrow will be a good day. But unlike him, Johan never had someone like Tanma. The anime has a lot of religious symbolism. Tanma is depicted as Christ, but Johan was the Antichrist. Tanma and Christ tried to bring the best out of people, but Johan and Antichrist were the complete opposite. They tried to get the worst out of people. In the end of the anime, Johan asks Tanma, For you, all lives are created equal. That's why I came back to life. But you've finally come to realize it now, haven't you? Only one thing is equal for all. And that is death. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching this video. It took me a lot of time and efforts to make my first ever documentary type video. I'm not sure how well this would turn out to be, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching. If you want more, then please subscribe and comment on what other characters I should be making documentaries on. Till then, bye.